best known for their hit song How Bizarre, OMC's hit track was inescapable in the mid-90s. It would be a number one hit in both Canada and the United States, and it would reach the top 10 in over a dozen countries and resulted in the group's lone album selling millions of copies worldwide. In fact, OMC's sole album would be New Zealand's biggest musical export in history. While How Bizarre was an upbeat song, OMC's career was not. Drugs, gangs, lawsuits, and health issues plagued the band, and that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Pauli Fumana would be the brainchild of OMC. He would be born in the late 60s to Polynesian parents in the impoverished Auckland suburb of Otara. Growing up in a difficult set of circumstances, Fumano was no stranger to police, frequently committing crimes, spending time in youth prison, and getting involved with gangs. Amongst all the turmoil in Fumano's life, he found joy in creating music with his brothers and sister. By the 80s, Fumano was performing with an R&B group called House Party, which included his brothers Phil and Tony, as well as his sister Christine. He would start out as a dancer before teaching himself guitar and eventually singing background vocals for the group. They would eventually change their name to Fumana and released a 1993 album on their own indie label. It would be the same year that Fumana founded a group called OMC, which stood for Otara Millionaires Club, which featured his brother Paul. Little did they know that in just a few short years, that name would ring true, but it would come at a heavy cost. OMC's early music resembled rap that was popular in America at the time, and while their early shows attracted some big crowds, it was the wrong type of people. According to Billboard magazine, Otara's Millionaire's Club shows would see audience members from US exported gangs, including the Bloods and the Crips, and it was at that point that Fumana decided to quit the group, take the OMC name with him, and start from scratch. His new music would draw on more of his Southern Pacific roots, and he would tell Billboard magazine in 1997, We were all doing these gigs and gang members started showing up. In Auckland, there's a very bad Bloods and Crips situation. I just decided to try and steer away from that and go in another direction where I could grow and get more into music that I wanted to make. Helping Fumana would be a producer named Alan Jansen, who produced an underground New Zealand compilation record called Proud, highlighting artists from South Auckland. OMC's contribution to the record would be the track We Are The OMC. Jansen and Fumana would start writing songs together, with the pair coming up with eight songs in just four hours, one of which was How Bizarre. Originally titled Duff It Up, the name was quickly changed to How Bizarre. Author Simon Grigg, who wrote a book about Fumana, would explain the origins of the song's influences telling the Star newspaper. It has the mariachi trumpets there, which Paulie got from listening to Herb Alpert records when he was a kid, and the acoustic guitar is an Allen thing from hearing folk rock on the radio, and Paulie's vocal is almost a hip-hop consciousness style, so it was all these elements mixed together, and Allen's wife kept on saying how bizarre about things, and we thought, that's a good phrase, you'd say something to her and she'd go, how bizarre? So it came from her, you'd say. The day following the marathon writing session, OMC was booked to play the Big Day Out Festival in Auckland, where they debuted the song live for the first time. It was a pretty disastrous gig, as people would walk out on Fumana, but despite their poor live reception, Australia seemed to love Polly, with Rolling Stone referring to Fumana as an I quote, the Marvin Gaye of the Pacific. By late 1995, OMC would issue their debut album How Bizarre on indie label Ha. Huh? It became a massive seller in New Zealand, moving about 35,000 units. The album would be distributed worldwide by major label Mercury Polygram Records, and a spokesperson from the label would tell Billboard, People here felt strongly about the album and song, but international sales don't always translate because of the vast amount of radio and retail outlets here. In America, the first stations that helped pave the way for the song to show up on modern rock radio were KITS in San Francisco, KDGE in Dallas, and KNRK in Portland. The success of how bizarre on modern rock radio in America took Fumana by surprise, who told Billboard, I was in Los Angeles for Christmas, and I would hear this hardcore music coming out before How Bizarre. I remember hearing Henry Rollins just cranking out the song and then I heard mine. What a mystery, he would say. Author Simon Grigg would recall the song's success, revealing How Bizarre just didn't sound like anything else. So when it came out, a lot of people went, what the F is this? Because it just sounded so odd, he'd say. Following How Bizarre's success, Fumana would be thrown into a massive global promotion for the single and the album. 
OMC would appear on the UK's Top of the Pop show. They would tour with U2, Cheap Trick Share, the Smashing Pumpkins, and even open for Bon Jovi on an aircraft carrier. At one point, OMC did three return trips to the UK in just one month alone, and in between, he would fly back to Australia. The song and the album was estimated to generate around $8 million US in royalties. OMC's monumental success would also be their downfall. While Fumana was on the road to promote the album, his friend and producer Alan Jansen was back home in New Zealand and people at the record label were trying to drive a wedge between the pair, resulting in Jansen suing Fumana in 1997 over royalties to both the song and the album. It would eventually be settled by a mediator, but their creative partnership would be over for the time. Things went further downhill for Fumana after Polygram pushed him to record a cover of the Randy Newman hit, I Love LA, for the 1997 Rowan Atkinson film Bean. The song would prove to be a commercial flop, and Fumana's relationship with Polygram only grew more tense. His brother Tony, who toured with OMC as a bassist, would recall to Stuff New Zealand. There are a lot of stories about Polly confronting a lot of record label executives over in the US, and I know that most of those stories are true. There were a lot of physical ones. We had taken a 20-hour bus trip. They wanted a TV interview at 6.30 a.m. Polly asked him if he could just have a shower and something to eat before he left. They threatened to pull the concert that night if he didn't do the interview. The rep said, you have to be there at 6.30 or we'll pull the plug on your show and the rest of your shows, his brother would recall. Pauly would end up throwing the rep through the window of the tour bus. Adding to that fact was that life on the road was wearing on Fumana, as his grandmother would pass away in 1999. Pauly abruptly quit the tour and returned home to say goodbye to his grandmother. Polygram wasn't happy with him, and he would lose his recording contract by the new millennium. He would never tour the world again or put out another record. In 2006, Pauly declared bankruptcy, losing his home and fancy cars and he would blame his tour as well as the tax man for taking most of his money. But those close to him pointed to his generosity as well as his lavish lifestyle for his money woes, in addition to signing contracts he didn't fully understand. It was estimated by the late 2000s that he was making around $50,000 a year just from songwriting royalties. While Paulie lost most of his money, his old friend Jansen didn't, instead rekindling their relationship in the late 2000s, and Jansen would financially support Paulie's comeback. In 2007, Fumana released OMC's comeback single for all of us, but it proved to be a commercial flop, and Fumana called it a day soon afterwards. In 2010, after years of declining health, Paulie would pass away at the age of 40. Following his death, his family would reveal that Fumana had been suffering from a chronic degenerative disease similar to multiple sclerosis, but his official cause of death would be pneumonia. He would leave behind a wife and six children, and following the news of his death, How Bizarre would show up briefly on the charts in New Zealand. In December of 2020, the song was once again in the news as it was blowing up on social media app TikTok. By late 2020, nearly 100,000 videos incorporated the song's lyrics with the hashtag How Bizarre, generating nearly 1.5 billion views. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.